What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Uh, welcome to the third Blender Python scripting tutorial. Today we're going to actually get some stuff happening in the BGE. We're going to have some movement. We're going to basically do a basic movement script. We might even get to basic rotation. And what we're going to be controlling here is this uh, cube, our good old default friend. He doesn't get a lot of attention so we're going to give him the attention he deserves. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here. Blender game you just want to make sure it's properly set up blender game logic and what we're gonna do now is in the 3d view I'm gonna set this to perspective just because I like perspective uh, and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna give this object physics one thing to note is that objects that aren't set to dynamic don't detect collision uh, that's one thing that I realized you can't detect collision if your object is set to static or no collision or anything like that so, uh, now our object is dynamic. I assume you already know the basics of the BGE, otherwise I don't know what you're doing here. Just going to increase the size of this plane, and if we hit P, we can see our cube lands successfully. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to shrink this to 0 0.5, which is going to be one blender unit. Uh, yeah, I just like that. There we go, it's one blender unit. Uh, now we have a basic cube. We're going to go to our camera view here. Actually, let's just stick to this view. So now we're looking at the front approximately. Not perfectly, but there we go. We can see now we can run this and our cube lands. Okay, that's the basic thing we want to do. Now we want to create a script. So we're going to go to templates, game logic basic. Now I already explained to you guys in the previous tutorial what this stuff means. I have told you that these two things are useless. These, not two things, these, uh, lines here are useless so uh, just delete those we don't need them we're gonna change own to player because I wanna call this player uh, keep this in one line so now we have our player our player is the owner of the controller now we don't have a controller so we let's do that now we'll have a, an always sensor activate true level triggering so that it runs every frame and we're gonna have a python controller connect them and select our script. I'm going to call this player. Now you always want to have p dot .py at the end of uh, dot .py as the extension of your script just because that's that tells Blender that this is a Python script. Um, yeah, so that's the basic. Uh, now we can run our script and we want to see the console of course so I'm going to toggle system console. Now if you watched my first tutorial I said that if you're a Mac user uh, you could probably uh, go to where you have blender don't open it right click and hit show package content and go into a folder called mac mac os x or something like that and then look for blender dot two point six two is what i'm using right now so whatever version you have you should have a two point five up version uh... Sh probably you want to have two point six two or uh... any newer version if you're watching this at a later time but anyways that's how you should be able to open it through terminal so you can see the the errors if you have any. Now you notice here it says, uh, if you're on Linux by the way, I'm not sure, I'm sorry but uh, I don't use Linux that often. Uh, you notice here that it, it says Blender Game Engine started, Blender Game Engine finished three times. That's because we ra I ran it three times uh, when testing out the physics and all that stuff. So uh, this is going to show you basically what happens in the script and uh, now the other thing we want to do is we want to see our Python API reference so we're going to open that go down here to the game engine module and I'm gonna go to game logic I'm just gonna open this in a new tab because that's what I want and I'm gonna go to KX game object now you see a lot of the stuff is down here already so uh, but we want the KX game object section to see what we can do with KX game objects which is just uh, objects cubes whatever meshes um, so now we want to do basic movement right let me go to Blender here. We want to make our player move, so let's see what we have here. If we scroll down, I'm just showing you guys how to be able to use this. You can read these things and sort of understand what it does. A lot of these things you might not be interested in, uh, especially as a beginner, but uh, what we want here is apply movement. So what we're going to do here uh, is you can see here that apply movement here you have the movement so we, you have a bra there should be a bracket here with uh, 
three values, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis, and one for the z-axis. You're going to see this right now. And then if you want it to be true or false in terms of local. So do you want the movement to be local uh, or global? So do you want, if the character rotates, for example, do you want him to move in that direction where, wherever he's pointing or where the world says is the y-axis, for example? So the world's y-axis or the player's y-axis is the point. So we're going to use apply movement here. You can see here there's apply rotation, apply force. These work the same way. Uh, so we're going to use apply movement right now. We're going to go here and now we can type in apply movement. Now you want to make sure that it's written the same way. You can see here apply and then a capital movement. Uh, so you want to make sure it's the same thing. But here we're telling Blender to apply movement. But Blender doesn't know what uh, what object we want it to apply to because you can uh, you can have multiple objects in a script for example uh, if we have this plane and we can have an always sensor and we connect it to the cube here uh, let's select the plane we can get the plane if we I'm not going to show you how to do that but you can have multiple objects let's say you have the player object and then you have uh, if you're doing a shooter for example you have a bullet spawn object which would shoot bullets you want them all to be in your script uh, so that you can uh, control multiple objects using one script it's all it just keeps things uh, more organized so what we're going to say is we're going to tell it that we want the player you want it we want it to apply movement to the player we already called this player if we have if you have own here then you're, you you want to call this own and it's just a variable you can uh, call it whatever you want i prefer player so i'm going to stick with that now for apply movement now we're going to have to tell it what kind of movement we want it to apply and if we want it to be true movement or false movement. So we're going to create a bracket. Now remember we had here the, as you can see here, we had the movement here and then we had the whether we want it to be false or true or false. Now you have to understand how this works. When it says local equals false, you don't put local equals false or local equals true. You just put false or true, uh, starting it with a capital letter. So we're going to have the movement here basically uh, we're going to create a bracket for the movement section and we're going to have 0 for the x-axis we're going to have let's say 0 0.5 for the y-axis and 0 for the z-axis and then we're going to have the comma because you can see here that there is a comma and now we're going to set it to true or false I want it to be true so it is local movement so when this rotates let's say we rotate it on the z-axis its new y-axis is going to be over here, not there, which is the global y-axis. So that's just something uh, you want to know. And I just undid that stuff. So let's let me just write that again. Two brackets, one inside the other. Zero, zero point five. And I'm not sure if this is too fast or not, but we'll see. Comma and nope, true. Okay. So now if we hit play, just P our cube lands and nothing happens so if we check our console we can see here that on line 9 in main and then it says line 12 in module ignore that module stuff uh, in line 9 in the main it says apply movement object has no attribute kx object has no attribute apply movement now what's wrong chances are I misspelled something so let's delete this L run it and you can see our cube just shoots into the void there. Uh, it's a bit fast, so I'm going to slow this down. I'm going to set it to 1 maybe, or 1, I don't know. Let's just see. That's fine, yeah. Now what happens here is we told it to move the player forward. Uh, so we didn't tell it to move it if we press a certain button. So it's just going to move him all the way. Uh, that's all all it knows right now is move the player uh, point 0.1 blender unit in, the, in his own y-axis every frame because we told it here to run every single frame. Uh, that's what it does. Now if we want to uh, specify a key input, we want to do one thing first of all. We want to assign a keyboard variable. This, is, this just makes our uh, script a bit shorter. So we're going to hit keyboard equals BGE logic keyboard. Now this is something you just want to memorize. That keyboard equals BGE logic keyboard. And what this does is it gets the keyboard submodule from the logic submodule from the BGE module. So it's going to look okay. In the BGE module there's logic. In logic there's keyboard. Okay. And this is it's going to use this to understand 
what we're pressing. It's just sort of uh, so it knows uh, whatever, like the input commands. So 